chemistry lecture number 19, atomic number, isotopes, and mass number. Protons occupy the nucleus of the atom. Henry Moseley was an English scientist who found a way to count the number of protons in an atom. He exposed the elements to x-rays. The elements would give off energy. And this is just a fancy way of saying he zapped the elements with x-rays. And then after they were zapped with the x-rays, the elements would uh, give off a certain glow of energy. The type of energy emitted by the elements could then be analyzed to reveal the number of protons of the nucleus. So the best explanation for what the sentence means is that after they were zapped with x-rays, the elements would glow and give off certain patterns of colors. And the pattern of colors emitted would give the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. That's the best way I can explain it. And later on, you'll learn what we mean by emitting patterns of color. But that's what would happen. And it was found that different elements had different numbers of protons. Thus, atoms are identified by the number of protons in the nucleus or the atomic number. So the word atomic number just means the number of protons in the nucleus. The periodic table can be used to find the atomic number of any element. And this is what a periodic table looks like. So it lists all the elements and each box shows a symbol for the element. And inside the box are usually two main numbers. I want you to get a uh, periodic chart. So go find your textbook. In your textbook, you should have a periodic chart. If you don't have your textbook on hand, go online and uh, download a picture of the periodic chart. If you go to Google and type in periodic chart and then images, uh, you should be able to uh, print a picture of the periodic chart. But get a periodic chart and see if you can find the atomic number for nitrogen. If you're having trouble finding nitrogen, it's on the top right-hand side if you're having trouble. Let's see, so there's nitrogen right there, top right-hand side. Now the box with nitrogen should have two types of numbers, a whole number and a number with decimals. We're going to ignore the number with decimals. So if we took sort of a close-up view of this box with the letter N in it, in the box you'd see a whole number and a number with decimals. And we're not going to pay attention to the number with decimals for this lecture. So just ignore any numbers that have decimals in it. We're only paying attention to the whole number. So this number seven is the atomic number of nitrogen. And that means that all nitrogen atoms have seven protons in the nucleus. Now in a neutral atom, the number of protons in the nucleus is equal to the number of electrons. So nitrogen has seven protons and seven electrons. Atomic number is the same as the number of electrons it has. Now use your periodic chart to find the atomic number of the following elements. Hit pause, see if you can find these, and then see what the answer is. Okay, are we ready? Carbon has an atomic number of 6. Sodium has an atomic number of 11. If you had trouble finding sodium, sodium the symbol is Na. It doesn't start with the letter S. We'll talk later about the, why we use Na for the symbol for sodium, even though sodium begins with the letter S. But sodium has 11 protons of the nucleus. Hydrogen has one proton of the nucleus. So that's the atomic number of each of those elements. Now, atoms with the same number of protons but a different number of neutrons are called isotopes. For example, there are three types of hydrogen protium, deuterium, and tritium. And protium has one proton in the nucleus. Deuterium has one proton and one neutron. Tritium has one proton and two neutrons. So you can see how the name is sort of related to what's in the nucleus. Protium just means, I guess sort of implies just a single proton. Deuterium, D-E-U, I think that's a Greek prefix for two. If you increase something by a factor of two, you've doubled it, so do. So, two nucleons. Tritium, tri means three, so there's one, two, three nucleons. Here's a picture. So these are isotopes of hydrogen. So protium with a single proton, that's the electron orbiting around it. Here's deuterium, again one proton, but this time there's a neutron sharing the nucleus. Tritium, again a single proton, but with two neutrons inside. So these are three types of hydrogen or three isotopes of hydrogen. And they're all hydrogen because they all have 
one proton. So anything with one proton makes it a hydrogen. But as you can see, there are three different types of hydrogen. They differ by the number of neutrons. That's what makes them isotopes. If you look at what I've written here, um, these symbols give information about the uh, these particular types of atoms. So H is the symbol of the element. The number on the bottom is the atomic number, one, one, one. The number on top tells the number of protons plus neutrons. So one proton, and this tells you the total number of protons and neutrons. It doesn't tell you how many protons, but it gives you the sum of the number of protons and neutrons. Total of three protons and neutrons. Okay, so to review, protium, deuterium, and tritium each have one proton, thus all of them are isotopes of hydrogen. So there are three types, or three isotopes of hydrogen. Now an atom containing a specific number of protons and neutrons is called a nuclide. For example, all nuclides of tritium contain one proton and two neutrons. And I guess a nuclide of deuterium would be one proton and one neutron, and a nuclide of protium would just be uh, one proton. So if it specifies a specific number of protons and a specific number of neutrons, it's called a nuclide. The total number of protons and neutrons in a nuclide is the mass number. So the mass number of tritium is 3 since it has one proton and two neutrons. 1 plus 2 is 3. The number of neutrons in a nuclide can be calculated from n equals a minus z. This is just the mass number, number of protons and neutrons, minus the atomic number number of protons. So if you subtract those, that'll give you the number of neutrons. And then if you just rearrange this equation, this will give you the mass number. Mass number is the number of protons and neutrons, so Z is protons, N is neutrons. <clears throat> Here's the uh, notation for nuclides. The way you uh, write the uh, notation for nuclides, it's just the same way that we did for the isotopes of hydrogen, you have the symbol of the element, and then on top is the mass number, and on the bottom is the atomic number. So, X represents the symbol of the element, A is the number of protons and neutrons, Z is the number of protons, or the atomic number. So, here's an example here, here's a nuclide of uh, a carbon atom. This particular carbon atom, or nuclide, has a mass number of 14, and an atomic number of 6. So 14 represents protons plus neutrons, 6 just represents the number of uh, protons. So if I were to subtract 14 minus 6, that tells me this has 8 neutrons in this particular uh, one. And it also has 6 electrons and 6 protons. Proton to neutron number is the same. How many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in 7 lithium? Well, the problem with this one is that where's the atomic number down here? It's not given. Well, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to look on the periodic chart to find the atomic number. So, 7 lithium. So, if we were to look up Lithium on the periodic chart, it's right here, and then down here, I don't know if you can see it very well, but do you see the number three down here? So that's the atomic number of uh, lithium. See, number three next to the Li. So that tells you that lithium has three protons. So, three protons, and the number of protons equals the number of electrons, three electrons, And then how many neutrons? Well, 7 minus 3 is 4, so that's going to give me 4 neutrons. So this particular isotope of lithium has 4 neutrons in it. All lithiums are always going to have 3 protons and 3 electrons. Now sometimes the notation for a nuclide is written like this, U-235 or uranium-235. And the number 235 represents the mass number. So if you were to rewrite this in the notation that I first showed you, you would write it as 235U, like that. And then you would look on the periodic chart to find the 
um, atomic number of uranium. So let's do that. Well, let's see, here's uranium down here. What was that number is that? 92? Yeah, it looks like the number 92 right there. So that's the nuclide we're working with. So how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in copper 65? Hit pause and see if you can solve it. Okay, you ready for the answer? So what I like to do is I like to just start rewriting this. So copper and then the 65 I'll put up here. That's the mass number. And we have to look on the periodic chart for the uh, atomic number of copper. Where's copper? Oh, here it is. Copper is right here. So if we look at it, copper has an atomic number of 29, I think. So copper has an atomic number of 29. So we can say that the copper 65 has 29 protons, 29 electrons, and then how many neutrons does this thing have? Well, let's see. 65 minus 29. That's going to give me 36 neutrons. All right, so that's how you figure out the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons when you see uh, nuclide notation, so to speak. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 19, atomic number, isotopes, and mass number.